On your right hand side of the main page, this is where you get a lot of your information. Your market watch is over here, which is all of your stats. Sure. Um, your stats are over here, your condo information, your web forms login is here, and your Authentisign login is here, okay? So Authentisign is a whole nother animal. We're going to tackle that another day, um, probably actually at the beginning of next week's session. But this is where you access all of that, okay? Web forms, I'm going to do a quick little intro into that. You guys already have, um, Anna, you might not, but your kits and stuff set up. Do you have that? Well, the so with the different forms today, in it? Some of them. Okay. Uh, but I have a few questions that okay. I didn't ask. I must have enjoyed it again. All right. So this is the new web forms. They've changed it um, from the old one. For those of us who are used to the old system, the new one is now officially in place. It's actually much nicer. It it's way more user-friendly. Um, and it's actually it's actually pretty nice. So I'm gonna pull up an example of a kit that I have. This is just a past client, so that you guys can see what it looks like inside. Okay, here's what you're gonna get. You get the name, the address, their information, and then the forms that go with the offer. Okay, so that's because I've created a kit and I've put them into that kit. Now you can do what they call create a template, um, and when you do that, see up here it says template kits. See where the arrow is? Mm -hmm. If you click on that, you'll see that I have template kits already built. Listing package, seller, listing package, condo, lease package, condo, sale, free wholesale. I need to add them, but I need to add more, but those are the ones I built so far. If you go to the right here, you can say create template kit, okay? What you're going to want to do with that is you're going to want to create a template kit. So I'm going to say I don't have anything for landlord um, freehold listing, right? So I'm going to do that because I don't have a kit for that. And I'm going to create a blank template kit because I don't have a pre-existing kit. And I'm going to pick the Toronto Real Estate Board and I'm going to hit Create Template Kit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is add the forms that I need for this kit. So I'm going to go Add Forms. It's so much easier in this one. Everything's right where you need it. And I'm going to pick the forms that I need for that kit. So I'm obviously going to pick Listing Agreement because I'm going to be listing for the landlord, right? If you search in here, you can just type in keywords and then anything that matches that can come up. So I'm going to be looking for a listing agreement for a tent for um, a rental. Okay. So listing agreement, landlord representation, authority to offer for lease. That's what I want, right? Because I'm doing a leasing kit. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to and add that. Form number 210. 210. Yeah. Um, you can, you can the, they're already labeled with oh. the numbers. If you know the numbers, you can just search the number on the form will populate. I grew up in the era in real estate where they, they didn't learn, teach us the numbers. I just know the names of all the forms. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know yeah, the so numbers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just put the short form in the Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to look for MLS because you want the MLS data sheet, right? Um, you have, um, uh, okay, so... So now you're making a list of that, but do you have like uh, already made for people to see? Uh, what do you mean? Like, like a list already like made? Something that we have a packet together. So they were yesterday, they were teaching us that we have a, like a package that uh, we have the certain forms and then uh, we can put the kind of. That's what I'm showing you how to do. That's what I'm showing you how to build. have already something? Like now, landlord thing. Uh, so, are you saying do I have a, a list of what forms you need for each forms, package? You have yes. A yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in Google Drive, in our Which group Google Drive, there's a, a sheet, um, a form, and it has all of the different packages and all the different forms you'd need in each package. So, you can use that, and then you can go and create and then your then kits. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to do this whole kit because it takes a minute. But this is a basically how you would do it. So you just go through and you would add every form that you need and then you save the transaction kit. So I'm just going to hit done because I'm finished. I'm going to save it. Um, and then that's it. So when you want to edit the forms on the left hand side here, you can click on edit forms. You can add another form to the attachment. You could upload a schedule B or a schedule C if you wanted to. You can create a duplicate of the forms. Um, and, and you can also, um, and that's how you create, that's how you create the kit. If you want to have, and if you have a client and you're trying to set up a transaction kit for them, mm -hmm. so that's the difference. Transaction is for a deal. 
template is what like the template of the kits. So say you want to do a new transaction, you have a new buyer, they want to buy a property. You're going to come into web forms, you're going to click on this transaction kits, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to see everything that you already have done. These are all your deals that you've done in the past, right? They're all populated in here. Um, I'm going to go to create new transaction kit because it's a new client, right? New transaction kit. I'm going to name it. I usually name it the address and then the people's name. So I'm going to say 1234 Main Street. And then I'm going to say uh, Jim Thermos. <laughs> Jim Thermos. Okay. Jim Thermos is buying 1234 Main Street. I'm going to pick existing template kit. See this second option here? Mm -hmm. Because I have my kits pre-made, so I don't want to have to remake them. And then under search, I'm just going to write buyer. I don't actually have a buyer kit. Okay, so I'm going to write listing. Now I have my listing options. Listing package freehold. Is this property a freehold? Yeah. So I'm going to select that kit. And then I'm going to create client's email if I have it. You can add that in there. And the MLS, if it's a buyer, you can put in the MLS number because it'll auto populate some of the fields in the forms, okay? Which is nice. It'll put in the address, sometimes the legal description if you're lucky, the frontage, that sort of stuff. Anything you can pre populate. So if you're working with a buyer and you have an MLS number because that's the property they want to buy, plug that in there so that some of that info gets filled in for you, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit create transaction kit, okay? Now, email client is not mandatory. No, I don't need to put, because I might be sending it, in our case, we're going to send it to AuthentiSign, or we're going to send it to DocuSign, so we're not really going to email it from this program. You don't really need to have the email in there. Okay. If you want, you can put it in there, and you can email the forms from this program, and they can download them and, and sign them and scan them, that's what we used to do it, and then send it back to you. But now that we have electronic signature programs, you're going to send it through that program. So we don't really use that, that tool anymore. Yeah. Okay. So now when I look, here's everything that's happening. What this looks like, okay, if you ever see this, it's only doing this because some of the forms have been updated by Rico or by Aurea. And so they're just saying, hey, we're updating these forms, okay? Form number stays the same. It's just a new version. And if you look on the right, it'll say original version, new version. See yeah. that? Yeah. So they're updating from the 2016 version to the 2017 version. That's all that's telling you, okay? So you just say continue. No big deal. You want the forms updated, that's fine. Does it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? And that problem disappears. And then once you hit continue, see now it's creating the kit. Um, and now my kit is here. So you see 1234 Main Street, Jim Thermos, and here's all my forms. I clearly need to update my kits because I'm missing some forms. <laughs> However, that's how this works. Okay? So very straightforward. And then on the left, download, duplicate, email, print, edit, add. And then see down here, send to DocuSign. You can yeah. also add AuthentiSign here. I haven't done it yet, but you can do that where you send it directly through AuthentiSign, which is the free program we get now through TREB. Okay, so which is why we're going to talk about that next week yeah, um, because it's a good program to learn, and I think we need to start utilizing it and stop paying for DocuSign because right. they're essentially the same thing. And like we just talked about, red light, green light, right? If we don't have any money to spend. Well, then let's not pay $400 a year for DocuSign, right? right? That being said, I actually love DocuSign. So, you know, I'm kind of sad that it's not DocuSign. However, AuthentiSign I, is I use, very similar. I use hmm? Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Belto. No, Faltor. 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 So you're kind of used to AuthentiSign then. It's similar. Yeah, yeah. similar. Yeah. So, how do you add apps for AuthentiSign? So if I want to add an app, I see go to App Store oh. down the bottom. Okay. I believe this is it. Don't quote me on this. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to go see AuthentiSign, and where it says link, oh, okay. you would just click link, okay. and then you put in your username, your password, and that. So you have to set up the account in Stratus first before you can link it, which is why I haven't done this yet, because I can't figure out what my password is either. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think so too. I'm going to look into it this week, so by the time we have class next week, I'll be able to show you guys, but I'm pretty sure you are correct. Yeah. 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 Now you can use any of these programs: DocuSign, EasySign, AuthentiSign, Secure Share. But AuthentiSign is now connected to Treb and it's free. So why would we not use that, right? Yeah. That's how you would add it. You just go to link, and then it'll tell you to put in your username and password. You sign yourself in, and then it will link, and then you can automatically send forms from Web Forms to AuthentiSign, which is 
amazing because if you don't do that, you have to download the forms and then you have to upload them to AuthentiSign and then send it. It's a whole extra step that this removes for you. So make sure you set this up. Okay. Having said that, uh, the AuthentiSign then is only uh, we can only use it for this thing, or we can use it for our, for our personal documents anything as well. Anything you want. Yeah, absolutely anything you, for, you want. Oh, yeah. anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Now, if I go into printable forms, my I'm going to double check this, but I feel like these are the layman's forms. I'm just going to check. No, it's just one question. So oh, no, it's just the actual forms. So they, it, or all those they go through this uh, uh, what was it, Apple sign? Authentic sign, yeah. Apple sign. So they go just back and forth, back and forth, and then final when finally everything is done, then you print it out, right? Uh, you don't even have to print it out. You can save it on your computer as a file, mm -hmm. and then you can just email it to everybody that needs it. So this oh, is actually, it's paperless. Print. You can print it out if you want to, but this allows you to do everything. Anymore. Like, I have yeah. my print paperwork at home, right? Yeah. House. Yeah, no, so we, we email it. You don't have to, no. You, we, just, we can print it. Everything can be wireless now. Um, in the printable forms area, if you want to kind of get a quick list of all the different forms that you can print, um, just to make it easier for you. So say you just want a blank kit and you don't want to have to go in and create a transaction kit to get it because you're just printing one form. Just go to printable forms, okay, right up here at the top. Um, and you'll see all the forms there and you can just print it from here. You can also do this from the main area, but you'd have to create the kit first. So it takes a little longer. This is a shortcut. Okay. And, these all the, and these will all be the updated versions. Yes. Yeah, yeah it absolutely. automatically updates. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, and clauses. Um, if you're looking at clauses, so there's clauses are pretty interesting. You can have custom clauses. So what I've done is I've created custom clauses for the clauses that I use majority of the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now some of these have been updated. Some of them I've tweaked a bit and I haven't updated them in here and that's fine. But when I'm doing an offer, I can just go in and go boom, 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 boom. And my custom, and I don't have to search through all the other clauses. I just go here automatically. You can also, in those template kits that you create, mm -hmm. when you're making it, you can go in and put your name everywhere your name's supposed to be and put your clauses in and then save it so that when you create your transaction kits, the clauses are already in your Schedule A. That okay? is so nice. You can eh? do that, too, if you want to spend the time doing that. I haven't done that because it's just as quick for me to go custom clauses, click, 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 click. These are the ones I use and then add the additional ones I need. But your custom clauses have all your name and everything already. They're just the clause. They're just the clauses. Oh, they're, oh the clauses. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You would have to log in. You'd have to log into mine and, and copy them. Um, so in in web forms, the clauses are already in here. So if you see clause library, right? See up here. This is every clause. So what you would do is you would just go through and open it, copy it, and then create it in custom clauses. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's no real shortcut for that. So you have to kind of say I want it. Say I know that I use um, chattels and fixtures all the time in good working order, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open this clause. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to copy it, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go. Can you just right-click on the clause and copy it? No, you have to look you at have it. have to open it? Yeah. You have to open it to see the text because you okay. only want to copy the text. Oh, the but then I'm going to go, okay, now I'm back into custom clauses, right? Mm -hmm. See what I did there? Create custom clause. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to call it chattels and fixtures. And I'm going to paste it. So there you go. Now mm -hmm. I have, I'm going to save it. And now I've added a new clause. Oh, I've already used it. But that's how that works. Um, Okay. It's because I've already have it in here, but yeah. So that's how it, that's how that works. And then you would save it, and now it shows up in my list, chattels and fixtures sample, right? So now it's a custom clause. So instead of having to go through the clause library, I just open my custom clause and copy it. So it's pretty simple to do. You just need a list of your clauses. You need to know what standard clauses you would use, right? That's all there is to that. Yeah. So if you want to search by category, say I say mortgage, right? Say I'm looking for mortgage clauses. Yeah. I don't know. It's still searching. You can try to find So we take that, right? Yeah. Uh, is that something that also you, you have to do the clause on the listing, listing uh, paper work? Shall we take back? And then, is that, is that the buy, the buyer, that, uh, 
in the end. I was just thinking because the, somebody like a was, sale of buyer's property or seller take back seller from the mortgage. mortgage. Yeah. So it's the buyer would put that in as the clause when they give you the offer, okay. and, and then the seller would. So you would review the offer, you'd read all the clauses, and then if it's a clause you don't like, you cross it out and you have them initial it and say, no, so we're not ex back. Okay. Yeah. So he wants to take the seller back, right? So how do he you... He wants to take the... He wants... The okay, buyer wants... The person. Okay. And the uh, buyer sent me a letter saying yeah. that I, I want to take a, a seller take back. A mortgage. Yeah. So you want the seller to hold... How do I deal with it? You put a clause in the offer. I put a clause yeah. and say it's okay, and then they have to take it to the lawyer, right? No. So what happens is... I'm just asking Are you the someone. buyer or the listing agent? I am a listing. Okay. So what will happen is if the buyer wants a seller take back mortgage, they put that clause in the offer that they give you. Yeah. If you're okay with it, you don't do anything, you would negotiate the rest of the offer and accept the offer once you guys come to terms. And then the, the bank and the lawyers and stuff would navigate the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. If your seller doesn't want to do it, you just cross it out. Yeah. So I, was, I had a feeling, I was thinking about it because somebody in a, in a, you know, in our group we were asking, it was the one who I had open house with. Yeah. And I think he was asking about that. About a seller take back. Seller take back. Yeah. He didn't know how to deal with it. And I was. Oh. It's just you know, a standard, it's just a standard clause, just like a mortgage yeah. or any other financing. Yeah. And if the seller agrees to it, you just leave it in the offer. If you yeah. want to make changes to it, you make company changes. And the lawyer will really will uh, work with it. The mortgage company will, depending on how it works. Yeah. yeah. Depending mm -hmm. on how they structure it. So the, the the seller would have to if the seller's going to do that, mm -hmm. they'd have to talk to the bank about that and how it would sure work and, and yeah. figure so it out. So the listing agent has nothing to really to do. No, you in an end. end. No, you would just have your seller make sure okay. that they're capable of doing that because they're still carrying it, yeah. and then that person is essentially paying them down, right? So that's how a seller take back works. You would, but they might only take back fifty thousand dollars or hundred thousand. Yeah. It might not be the whole amount, and then they'd have to make sure that they were in a position where they could do that, that they didn't need that money for a down payment on another house. So there's a lot of, that's a whole financial conversation. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much web forms, guys. There's nothing else to it. You mm -hmm. come here, you fill out your forms. If you want to fill out a form, you open it up. Oh, okay. Well, we're not doing that today. But usually you would just open it up, the form will show up, and you can just fill in the fields, right? It's already editable, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff, and it, it saves as you go, so don't worry about that. Um, and then you send it to AuthentiSign to the client, so you can, you know, sit down, fill out all your paperwork, get it all prepared, and email it to the client automatically. So there is some kind of, sorry, there's some kind of system that uh, you always have to use certain things in the, end, in the beginning and the end, so I was learning yesterday, and then you book between, you book at more... Uh, Losses, right? So there's a clause, there's a specific clause that goes first, yeah. and it's the balance of the deposit clause to say that the buyer will pay the balance of deposit on clothing, but that's the, there's nothing at the end. It's just, that's the only thing, just the buyer closet, the, the balance clause just at the have beginning. To keep adding yourself, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah, all the, all the clauses you want. So mortgage is usually one, home inspection is usually one, um, sometimes insurance, depending on the area. Yeah, chattels and fixtures, lawyers, depends on the scenario. Each offer is different, right? Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, you learn that by going through the process. It's easy enough, I can tell you, but to remember it all, you kind of have to go through it. And again, you'll get help with that the first few times you do it, right? I have a question. Um, this is when you're in um, delay to the city here at because this was something that we did at my brokerage when we were in um, deal agency, we had to put in this uh, solicitor clause for the seller and solicitor clause for the buyer. Yeah. Just to make sure they, you know, got independent advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not required here, okay. but good, but good idea. Yeah. Yeah, just to keep yourself protected as well to put in um, so, like solicitor's review or lawyer's review. Yeah. For sure, but it, it's not a required thing uh, that I, that I know of at okay. least here. Yeah. 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 So it was just something that was stuck in the way at my my yeah. office, and it was. When we were in dual agency, so yeah. it didn't matter whether I was representing the buyer. Yeah, and it's just dual seller. representation. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, it's as far as I know, not that I'm aware of okay. at this office. Um. But not a bad idea to do just to protect yourselves a little bit, right? So, um. Okay. And that means to so say that you were doing a deal, and I so I was doing a deal with Sharon. Then she's a she's an agent at this office. I'm an agent at this office. So we're in multiple representation because the same brokerage represents both people. 
So in order to kind of protect the buyer and the seller, you could put in a clause that says the lawyer is going to review the offer for both parties so that it's not so that if anything did come up, there's a grounds there to say, well, we sent it to the lawyers and the lawyers approved it so that there's no concerns in regard to the multiple representation. You can definitely do it. I don't think it's a bad idea to do that at all. Um, I tend to avoid multiple representation as much as possible, at least with myself. Yeah. So if it's with another agent in the office, I'm, I'm a bit more like whatever. You know, I like working with the same agents in my office. That's fine. However, if it's myself representing both the buyer and the seller, I would usually bring in an agent to, to deal with the buyer side of it. And I would deal with the listing side of it. So someone from the office just to help out with something. Just because it's very difficult to not cross the lines. And if someone can prove that you disclosed something you weren't and there was an issue, then you're in trouble. It's very That's why there's this whole conversation right now about changing the multiple representation rules in Ontario as well, because there is this gray area and you know our fiduciary duty, can we uphold it to both parties? Questionable, it is yeah. questionable, right? Yeah. So that's what they're talking about. So, okay, so that's, that's web forms. You guys know Stratus. Um, I know you've done the courses on it. I know. Oh, it logged me right up. Okay. All right. Got kind of a little upset there. Yeah. I know, right? You're not clicking enough. Okay. So I'm going to jump right into the CMA part just because it's already 11. Um, and we're going to kind of rock through that. Okay. Yeah. The Stratus section, if you guys have questions about how to use Stratus or that, just text me or email me or call me. I'll walk you through it. Okay. I'm not going to spend too much time on how to do it. I know you guys have done the training and, and you have the basics, right? Your, your tabs are over here, all the information, all the stuff you're going to click on, how you're going to search. It's all to the left. The only thing I will point out, because I think it's important, the tread map down the bottom. If you don't know the community or the area that the house is listed that you're trying to find is in, just come here, click on all these little boxes, and type in the address. Okay, I'll show you guys my house. I'm gonna hit search, and then it's gonna pop up my house, right? Now, if I zoom out. It's being very uncooperative today. And then you give it a minute because apparently it's super slow. There we go. It's going to tell you that this is my community. I'm in Bayview Northeast. Okay. <laughs> Here's Bayview Wellington. It's going to give you all the different pockets. So when you're searching and you're trying to do a CMA, this ties into that because your client might give you an address or you might be someone you door knocked and you don't know the name of the community specifically. So you're going to come here and go, okay, Bayview Northeast, got it. And then you're going to go do a CM, you know the pocket that you're searching specifically. Mm -hmm. So it's a map search first, right? Yeah, so Treb Community Map is what you're going to go to, okay? So down the very bottom, Treb Map, not PDF, just Treb Map. That's what you go to, okay? When you're doing a CMA, okay, in our Google Drive, there's a checklist that you can follow that tells you how to do this. I'm mm -hmm. going to show you real quick because I know you guys don't really use these mm -hmm. resources. So if I go into um, our the coaching and I go into Google Drive okay and then you guys all have this the same way I do there's gonna be this resources folder mm -hmm. okay when you open this there's a whole bunch of different things courses guides logos lead gen tools tracking tools office and deal paperwork scripts right so Anna that checklist that you were asking about is in this office and deal paperwork folder okay so see in, in listing paperwork and checklist info do you see that? The second one, listing paperwork. That's where you'll get the checklist of what forms need to be in your kits, okay? Now, if I go back to my courses section and I go to CMA, mm -hmm. okay, there's going to be the do, 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 do CMA guideline, okay? Oh. If you open this up, this will allow you help you with adjustments. So say you're making adjustments because you don't have a garage, they have a garage if you need to, you could mm -hmm. access this. But the second page, here's everything you should pull when you're doing a CMA. Here's your here's your list. Okay. So you can open this up, you can have it on your screen, you can print it, whatever you want to do. You could print all of this stuff and make a little reference binder if you'd rather have it not in the computer. But basically it's telling you, hey, this is everything we go to. So we're gonna pull the public records first, right? We're going to look at the lot size, assessment, taxes. We're going to pull Geo Warehouse, and we're going to make sure that the person owns the house, okay? 
So I'll show you if I go here and I go to um, public records, right? See where I am now? Anna, do you see this? Public records? Yeah. I'm going to click on this first, okay? Well, that's where you get your lot size. Yeah, this is where we go to get the lot size, the legal description, the most recent sale. I'm going to put in, I'll use my house because why not? Let's find out what it's worth. Maybe do mine, please. Sure. <laughs> What's yours? Nine. Is it Barn Swallow? Barn Swallow, yeah. I feel like we used yours last time we did this class. Okay. So nine Barn Swallow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is yours, okay? So this is what the property report's going to look like. This is your legal description, okay? Mm -hmm. Plan 65. It's two stories. It's 44 frontage by 88 depth. Your site area is 3,981. You don't really need to know that, but it's there. Yeah. The last sale amount was 5626, which is probably what you paid for it right. in 2008. And here's your assessment, so your taxes. You can see, hey, this is what's happening with the assessment value, right? Um, so it's going up every year a little bit. So you're taking a big jump from this year to next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just so that you're aware, be prepared for that. If you have a listing and you need to know the square footage and you don't know what the square footage is and the seller doesn't know what the square footage is, you can buy this $5 report right here and it'll tell you the square footage of your house. Okay? Oh, okay. You buy it right through here, it goes to your credit card and the, the report automatically populates. This is a great tool, okay? Not only for doing CMAs, but say you have a listing and people are arguing with you over the size of your listing or saying, well, it's small mm -hmm. and you have comparable sales, and you can show that they're smaller and yours is lit priced well, you can use this tool to, to provide that information to that agent and say, look, I know your client thinks this is a small house, but here's some information on it, especially in negotiations. Okay, this can come in handy. So remember that that's there because it can be quite, quite useful. What's the difference between the $9 and the $9? The $9 has the year the property was built. It has the permanent history and it shows any secondary structures. This $5 one just gives you square footage. But okay. $9 will not give you the square footage. Yeah, this $9 one gives you square footage, year built. Ah, see okay. all these things? Yeah, That's what you get. Yeah, next three. Yeah. yeah. So this is primary structure and that is secondary structure. So yes. is the primary if there's structure a garage. the same as the detailed square footage? Is that the same? Yeah. Okay. So this is the detailed square footage of the primary structure. This will give you, if there's a garage or any outhouses or other, or other buildings on the property, It'll give you the history of the permits. So say that someone did some um, upgrading or whatever, it'll give you permit history. It'll give you the year built. Year built is right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you already get that without paying anything. Right. Okay. But it'll give you, so say you have a property where there's additional structures or there's um, renovations or additions, then this detailed report might be more beneficial because you'll get the permit history and everything. As well as the primary structure. Yeah, it says it right at the top, detailed square footage, see? Yes, that one's a $9 one. But if you don't need this other information, you don't need that report. So then you would just get the basic one, okay? So that's all we really look at when we come into here, into um, public records. What you can do, see this PDR up at the top right that I'm kind of highlighting right now? See yeah. here? If I click on that and I hit report, it's going to generate a report that's going to provide all this information it's also going to provide all the demographics of the area, okay? What's cool about this is that if you're looking at a listing and you're trying to target market or figure out, hey, who's buying into this neighborhood or what are the target demographics, who's yeah. attracted to this area, I can go through here. Here's all those details, right? Year built, score footage, or sorry, site area, lot size, your assessments. And then here's the enhanced data. You have four bedrooms, three bathrooms, one half bath. You have a fireplace. You have a two-car attached garage. So I can get all this information from here. So if I'm doing a CMA on a property but I haven't seen the property, I can come here to get some extra details if there's no listing for the property, right? Yeah. also gives you a map. Here's where you're located. You know, you're backing onto a nice little water basin there, um, which some people like, some people don't like. Now, here's your statistics for the neighborhood. Total population median age, families, 75% of the people in your neighborhood have families. So you know you're targeting families, yeah. right? Um, total number of household projected, average household income, 125,000, average household size, 3.4, which essentially means it's a parent and a kid in most homes, right? Yeah. 
Um, and you can look at your age range. Your average age range is 35 to 49. So say you're doing Facebook ads mm -hmm. and you're targeting buyers for this pocket. Will this give you all the details you need to know in order to select your target market? A hundred percent. So this becomes useful when we're talking to our clients about the strategy of selling their home. So uh -huh. don't skip this part, okay? What you can do is just save this, print it as a PDF and save it onto your computer. Print the report, you know, save as PDF mm -hmm. as the option. Save it into the file on your computer for this client with all their paperwork and stuff so you have everything, okay? Because when you go to do your CMA, you're going to print all of this and bring it with you. Right. So you save it there so you have it, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. The next thing is Geo Warehouse. Geo Warehouse you can get to two ways. If I click on this little triangle house up here, see where mm -hmm. I am? That'll take me to Geo Warehouse and it counts as one of my reports because it'll load me right into the file for this property. If you don't want to use a report, because we get a thousand a year, I believe, this little Geo Warehouse tabby down here uh -huh. won't count as a report. So you could click here and then put in the address again if you don't want to use your reports. Uh -huh. I'm going to use the report because a thousand a year is more than enough um, and it's quicker. So give it a second, it's processing and it's going to take me into. Um, Geo Warehouse, okay? So when I'm in here, it's going to load your property automatically. So now we see Nine Barn Swallow. Here's all the information. Ivan, you do in fact own this house. That's good to know, right? Nice. This is what we're checking for when we come to Geo Warehouse. The, the title. Are the people on title? Do they actually own the house? Can they legally sell the house? Kind of an important step, okay? <laughs> so we're going to check that. Also, your legal description again is here. Your assessed value shows up, your lot size shows up, your, your zoning shows up, right? And when you bought it and what you paid for it shows up. Now, you could also pull, if you want to, neighborhood sales, and you can do a search here oh, to I see. You can, but here's what I'll tell you. They're not as accurate as using MLS, okay? The, the, you tell me what CDAT yeah. So if you're not finding a lot of data on MLS and you want to see, hey, did someone sell privately, you can come here and you can you can take a look. It's, it requires Flash, which apparently I don't have right now, so I'm not going to go through that. But usually a, a list of all the sales in the neighborhood will show up and it will show you on the map where the properties are. Okay, oh. So you could use that um, and you can click the enhanced report. Now, new Geo Warehouse, see up here? Yeah. Eventually, this is what Geo Warehouse is going to look like, so I'm going to show it to you now, okay? Because it's going to happen it's soon. Effective, right? It's it's effective. You However, use you can use the old style if you want. I just haven't bothered to update mine, but this is what the new one looks like, okay? Nice. So I'm going to put in nine barn swallow because this. Oops, I spelled that very wrong. Okay. So now I'm going to click on it, okay? Yeah. Here's your information, and it shows you on the map. Here's your house, okay? Yeah. So now if I go over here and I go to property report, mm -hmm. and I click on that, all my information is going to show up down here, okay? This is a much nicer setup. It's a lot easier to read. Here's your assessed value, your phased-in value. Here's your lot size. Here's the last sale. You do own it. Here's your description. Here's a picture of your house, mm -hmm. right? There's your car. <laughs> um and if you keep zone, zooming down, you'll see kind of here's your site structure, here's your accuracy, here's you your lot to me how, how you got there because I kind of got lost a little bit. Sure, I'll show you in a second. So here's your site structure, here's your lot description, your measurements, right? Mm -hmm. Here's all this information, total floor area. Again, you can click here to purchase your square footage if you want to. That's still the four dollars. Five dollars, yeah. Okay. And then right. down here, here's the recent sale. Plus so you tax. can you can see the growth of the value, right? So mm -hmm. they're estimating that by 2020, you'll be worth 995, which means you'll be worth more than that by them. But assessment-wise, that's what the trajectory that they're on. So, so how, you can look at that. Now what percentage is the uh, assessed value uh, different from the market value? Normally 40, 50 percent? Oh, it's not that high, but no. I don't know what the exact number would be. It varies. Um, it depends on the property, depends on the neighborhood, depends on the inflation in the neighborhood, depends on what's happening in the market. Like right now, your home might have dropped down a bit in value from where it would have been two years ago. So you might be closer to your assessment value now mm -hmm. than you will be in a year or than you would have been two years ago if we start to go back up. So there is no, there's no exact. Okay. Yeah, it's just it is what it is. Assessment is usually lower than market value, usually. When it changes, Assessment, yeah, correct. when it flips, then we're in trouble because now we're in an upside down market where our houses aren't worth what we're paying for them. And that's a problem, right? That's what happened in Europe. Yeah. 
Now, if you really want to, you can get into the subdivision plan. You can get into the real property report. You don't need any of that stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's there if you want it. And again, here's your demographics, okay? So all of that is here. You can take a look at all these tabs. They all click to the same thing. You can create a PDF report of all this information and save it again if you want to, okay? Uh, it's how just, do you do that? Does it PDF there? So here, PDF, yep. Yeah. If I click on it, I'm going to get my property report, generate PDF, ah. okay? That's it. So you just click PDF or you can print and save as PDF, either or. But PDF report will create the actual report for you and then you just save that. Anna, just to go back, because that's Geo Warehouse. That's it. That's all we use it for. There's no big secrets to it. It doesn't do anything magical, so unfortunately. So they use your thousand now, you know, for that, because you went yep. from there. But in the bottom, you can go free. Yep. So when I'm in, in MPAC, if I click here, okay. this takes me to Geo Warehouse, but I use my report. If I click here, what it's free. It? Uh, where? Here, down, down the down bottom down left. Down. So up here, top right. Takes me okay. to so see how it's see how it's located yeah, here yeah, yeah. in the inside yeah, okay, this okay. report. It's gonna take me right to this property. That's why it takes that's why it counts as using one of my a thousand. Okay? okay. If I click down here, if I click down here, then it's free, but um, I have to put in the search information to pull the property. Okay? okay. So if I click here. <laughs> If I click here, it takes me to Geo Warehouse, but it's not going to load the report the way it did last time. I'm going to have to search for it. Okay? okay. Now, to get to the new one, you just go right here, see New Geo Warehouse? Okay. And you just is. click on that. Okay? okay? And that's it. And then you'll see what we just went through. Okay? Cool. So you're good? Okay. So. Oh, just remember that the top and the bottom. For the top, you. It's counted, and the bottom one is not counted. Yeah. All right. I learned that today. Yep. So now, now yeah. we have our geo warehouse. We have our property report, so we know all of that information that we need to know, and we know that Ivan does in fact own this house. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start doing our CMA. Okay. The beginning of this. <laughs> you're so excited. The beginning of the CMA. We're just searching the property. So the first thing that I always do is I search the street. Okay. So I'm going to go search. And I'm going to put in freehold, available oh. and unavailable. Okay, I'm going to click archived? both. Nope, not archived. I don't care about that yet. So why, why would you not care about the archive? So archived, I'm only going to use to pull the subject property. So because I'm just taking a look right now at what's happened on your street in the last, like, six months, I don't need the subject listing for that. I'm just looking at, hey, there's three listings available and three have sold. Oh, okay. I'm going to save all that data anyway because it's what's most relative to you. So I don't really need your subject property to do that. Okay. So I don't need to do that yet. So archive is concerning the property that you're searching, yes. not for the no. for the rest of the... So archive okay. means that anything that's sold more than two years ago will show up in archived. Anything two years to present will show up in regular search. So archived is like if you're going back in time. The only reason I need archived here is to pull the listing from when you bought it. Oh, okay. And that's assuming you didn't buy it from a builder. If you bought it from a builder, I'm not going to find it, right? Yeah, and I bought it from the builder. So I'm not even going to find Absolutely. it. But if I was normally searching, say, for a client, and I want to see, hey, when did we buy it? What did we pay? I can get all that in Geo Warehouse, but then I'm also going to go to Archived, and I'm going to search, and I'm going to pull the listing from when they bought it so that I can see, hey, this is what it looked like, so that when I do my CMA, I'll have something to compare it to right? mm -hmm. because I know what the houses look like. Okay. okay. Also know the, the kind of general style of the house, the kind of area. I can read the description. Were there recent upgrades done at the time? That sort of stuff, right? You're also going to have asked the client, have you done any upgrades? Have you done any renovations? All that sort of stuff before you do your CMA, right? So that when you're doing your CMA, you know to include that information. Okay. okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do residential freehold, available and unavailable, and we're going to search your street. Okay. So we're going to do York, no. and then we're going to do Richmond Hill, no. and then we're going to do Jefferson, right? Yeah. And then we're going to do, we're not going to no. put in the street number because we, we're not looking for your specific listing, but we are going to do barn swap, okay? And now I'm going to do since um, June, yeah. I want to see since June what's happened. There's been two things since June. Okay, do you guys see where I did that last so update? Address, uh... address and last update. 
because I want to see what happened on his street in the last few months. Okay, what activity has there been? There's been two listings. It's the same property. They both came on the market. They both terminated. So nothing has sold on your street. And now I'm going to take a look at this. It's your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're going yeah. to have the same exposure as you. They both, they back onto that green space as well, right? Yeah. Um, now, I don't know the difference in the house in regard to size and square footage at this point. Walk out, I don't have a walk out. That's right. The That's the only difference. difference. And he's four plus one bedrooms which means he's got a bedroom in the basement and he's got a, an apartment in the basement, right? With yeah. an additional kitchen. So now I'm going to take a look at the pictures and go, okay, so this guy was listed at 1.699 and then 1.649 and didn't sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all that tells us is that, Hey, you know what? There might be an issue with, um, is he a realtor? yeah, he is a realtor. <laughs> yeah. Um, there might be an issue with that price and that might be high. Or it could be there's not a lot that's moving right now in your neighborhood, okay? So I'm going to add this to my listings card, okay? So what I did here was um, I clicked on, see up here, the little cart, when I have the listing open, there's a star. See here, there's a star, and then here there's a cart, right? See the cart? Yeah. I clicked on the cart, and I created... Um, a new cart called Barn Swallow because that's the one I'm doing and now I'm just going to add it to the cart okay so as you're doing your CMA when you find the properties you want to use add them to the listing cart that you create for that property okay this will make doing the CMA go a lot faster okay. right so every time you do a search and you find a property you want to keep add it to your listing cart for Barn Swallow or for your subject property okay make sense mm -hmm. okay if you want to create the listing cart over here on the left, you can also just click on listing cart and it'll take you to your listing carts and you hit create. I'm just going to show you this quickly. You hit create. If I hit create, I can put the name in. So I'm going to do CMA test. Okay. Create. And now that's going to show up on my list. And now I'm just going to add stuff into that cart when I'm searching. Make sense? Okay. So that's how you can do that. Other way you can do it is if I go back. If it loads the listing, if I click on the listing and I, if I click on the cart and I don't have one created yet, when I click on this, and I'm confusing it, but when I click on this, it'll ask me to create a new cart if I want to. So I can do it that way either, either way. Okay. So I'm going to go back to search because now what we're going to do, all right, we're going to keep going. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to search now. So I know what happened on the street. I've added them to the listing cart. There's nothing currently available. Now I'm going to search the area. So I'm going to do residential freehold. I'm going to do available and unavailable. Yeah. Okay. And that for sale. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to hit continue. All right. Now I'm going to search. I'm going to do York. I'm going to do Richmond Hill. Come on. And I'm going to do Jefferson. And then I'm going to leave it as Jefferson for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to select only so only new. Price change, sold, and sold conditional, okay? Oh, yes. Those are the only ones I want to know about. So new price. New price change, sold conditional, and sold, okay? And I'm going to search since June of this year because that's when we really kind of switched our market. So there's no point going further back than that because okay. if I go further back, I'm going to get skewed pricing. Too much. Well, yeah, because the summer market, we slowed down, right? And our market's changing a bit right now. We're in a bit of a transition. So there's no point going back to the spring market. It's totally different to where we are now. Then what I'm going to do is get more specific in this round with the property, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select detached, two-story, oh. right? I'm going to put finished basement. I'm going to put in minimum of four bedrooms. I'm going to put in, how many washrooms do you have? Okay, so I'm going to put a minimum of four washrooms. Including the basement, right? Um, yeah, total and the washrooms. Room. Yeah, total washrooms. I'm going to put four, okay? Um, if I wanted to, I could do, like if I had a kitchen, if you had a kitchen in the basement as well, I could add plus one. So see kitchen plus, that I means a, basement. I have a wet bar. No. Doesn't count. I'm talking okay. kitchen. Okay. Central air, gas, forest air, right? Because we don't want stuff that doesn't have these items. Yeah. Then we're going to go down to garage. You have two-car garage? Yes. Yeah. Garage space is minimum of two cars, right? Yeah, and because they're all very similar in that area. Yeah. And we're going to select attached garage, right? 
Now we have 13. 32 to 30. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to hit submit. 13 is a good number. We can work with that. What we yeah. want to know is how many of these are available and how many of them have sold. We actually have a good mix. So what I'm going to do once I open it up, see this LSC? Yeah. So that's the status, last status, right? I'm going to click on that and sort it because I want to see. I have three, four news, one sold conditional, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like um, nine, nine souls, I think, 11 souls, nine souls, nine souls. Yeah, okay. So what I want to look at, the new ones, I'm just going to add them to my listing cart automatically because these are just going under what's available. So when you're doing your CMA, you can tell them this is what's currently on the market. Here's how long it's been on the market, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not comparing our properties to these ones because they haven't sold yet. Yeah. So we don't have the sold data that's really going to make a difference here. But what we do have is something to show the clients to say, hey, if you were to go on the market currently, there's four other listings comparable to you, and here's their price range. They range from 1.48 to 1.68, okay? Big, big range. What we want to know is what are we actually worth? So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the first sold. I'm going to take a look at it. Now, Ivan, you can help me with this, seeing as yeah. it's your house. Usually what we would do here is we would we would have looked at the MLS listing of our subject property. We'd have our subject property information either on the screen or printed out beside us, and we'd start comparing, okay? Yeah. So first thing we're going to do is take a look. Well, their lot's 36 by 88, right? What yeah. was your lot? Are we similar? I think we're a bit bigger. A bit bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger. This will be in your, um, in your geo warehouse, geo warehouse stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. So if we want to confirm for sure... We're going to go back to public records real quick, okay, just because I didn't save it. Yeah. If you were obviously doing this yourself for an actual CMA, you'd have this stuff in your folder on your desktop, right? So yeah. you could just populate it. Will you save it since you have it? Or you it? What do you mean? Will you save it since we're doing the CMA? Would I save it? Yeah. Why would I save it? You would. No, I'm just saying since we're doing the C CMA. Yeah, no, because no. I, I have no need to save it. I'm not okay. going to use it for anything. So I'm showing you guys kind of how to do it, but okay. I'm not going to save it all. Okay. So you have 44 frontage, okay? Yeah. So 45 by, uh, would, would you round it up or no? Like it's 40, Well, it's 44.96. You could say 45. They have 36. You've got 10 extra feet on them, and it's in the width, okay? The yeah. width is the most important. The depth is not as big of a deal unless it's significant. But 10 extra feet on the width is a significant difference to your house oh, size. Mm -hmm. So we know that this house is going to be smaller than your house, okay? Yeah. Automatically. Now, they do have a finished basement. They have the two-car garage. They have the four bedrooms. They have the four bathrooms. So on paper, they're relatively similar. What we're going to see is the rooms are going to be smaller, okay? Oh, so I'm going to take, start clicking. I'm going to take a look at the listing, okay? And then this is the house. So... I'm going to guess, because I don't know your house, but that these rooms are smaller than your house, right? Yeah. Much narrower. Nicely renovated. Yeah. Really well-maintained property. Looks great. But it's going to be smaller, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to save this because it's still a good comparable, okay? Oh, it's, you took us. Yeah, but it's going to be, I'm going to save it into my listing cart, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to save that, but it's going to be what we call an inferior property because it's smaller, okay? Now I'm going to go to the next listing. All right, this guy is 44.69 by 88, so that's almost identical to you in size lot-wise. Yeah. Yeah, they have a finished basement with a separate apartment and a, a kitchen in the basement, attached two-car garage, four washrooms, four bedrooms, right? On paper... Very, very similar to you, okay? Yeah. So there's no interior pictures, which doesn't help us very much right now. So we're going to read the description. Lovely four plus two bedroom detached home in most prime location with functional layout, four large bedrooms plus den on second floor, two bedroom and finished basement generating 1100 per month. So it's a rental in the basement. Two car attached garage, four parking, two kitchens, four baths, two separate laundries, extra wide corner lot. Now corner lot, a lot of people don't like corner lots, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's going to kind of take away a little bit of value compared to what your value might be because you're not on a corner. Mm -hmm. Reason being that you don't really get much of a backyard when you're on a corner lot and you have the two streets. So if either of those streets is a busy street or you have a lot of traffic, you're going to have more noise, okay? So I know some people who just will not even look at a corner lot and I know some people who like it, mm -hmm. right? Sun-filled, stone and brick facade, 
They're not saying much about the property, which leads me to believe that there's a good chance that it's probably not in the best shape. Um, and it sounds like it could potentially be a rental property. Okay. Um, I would still probably argue that on paper we're similar, but it is a corner lot. The style is a little different. It is a rental that this is slightly inferior to your property without How being able to. It Plus, says in the description. They don't have a home okay. um, facing a pond. Right, and they don't that's have the they don't have the ravines, so that's right. a huge premium to you, right? Yeah. So we're gonna save that, but we're also gonna consider that to be an inferior property. Okay. okay. Then we're going to go to the next property. Now, basically, this is your CMA. We're just going to go through every property. Okay. We're going to figure out where they fall and how to explain them, the numbers to your client. Yeah. And then you're going to print the, the kit that comes with it, which I'll show you how to do. So this is 212 ma Silver Maple, 55 by 88. They've got 10 feet on us. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. That's significant. They're going to be a bigger ours house. Is, uh, ours is in, uh, 40, 45. 45 by yeah. 90 something. 88. 45 by 88. Oh, all of the depths have been the exact same. 88.58, oh, okay. all the lots have been that. The widths have the, been the thing that's changing. So on paper, again, similar house. Uh, I mean, similar in the fact that it has four bedrooms, four bathrooms, but it is bigger. Mm -hmm. It is a bigger lot. Finished basement, has an additional kitchen in the basement. Looks like it's in nice shape, right? Mm -hmm. Not a brand new kitchen, but a nice kitchen clean. Um, it looks pretty much like builder builder standard, right? Yeah. Doesn't look like it's got parquet flooring. That's not great. So some little negatives has a nice lot, has a nice landscaping, but it's not a ravine, right? No. And it's again, it's another corner. So we're um, going to take a look at this I one. I confused when they say 12 rooms. 12, so to 12 total rooms. So every no, room in the house, three, three in the basement. So there's 12 uh -huh. rooms above grade, living room, kitchen, dining room, family room, bedroom, bedroom, bedroom. There's 12 of them. And then there's three bed, three rooms downstairs, so most likely bedrooms um, and a kitchen, and then a living room area, right? Mm -hmm. So these are your total amount of rooms. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna read the description again. The the picture we can see, yeah, it's it's not really updated much. Um, four plus one bed, excellent location, corner lot, mon money spent on upgrades. Don't know where they spent that, but okay. Double front doors, foyer with 22 foot ceiling, crystal chandelier, hardwood floors, eating kitchen. So it has a great school zone, McLeod's Landing, close to transit, right? We're looking at this and we're going, okay, so um, the basement is an apartment. Again, looks like it might have been rented. I would, even though this has an extra 10 feet based on the condition, now I don't know the condition of your house, but I'm assuming that you've done some upgrades, mm -hmm. but based on the condition and the fact that the extra 10 feet, but it's a corner lot, means some of that land isn't usable. So that doesn't mean the house is going to be that much bigger because there's a setback on corners from the city, right? Oh, yeah. So even though there's 10 feet, if you're set back five feet on either side, well, then that's your 10 feet, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a bigger lot. So we're probably going to call that an inferior property as well, purely because it isn't as upgraded, it doesn't have the ravine, and it's a corner unit, right? And the corner takes away from the extra yeah. feet. Does so make sense? So now we're going to go to the next house, Valmont Avenue, okay? This one is kind of cute little house actually um 59 foot lot so significantly wider and not a corner okay so this is what we're going to call a superior property right off the bat because it's bigger than us mm -hmm. okay they have four plus one bedrooms four bathrooms finished basement no apartment in the basement which is great attached to car garage very similar to us 2636 square feet so if we know our square footage we could compare because we know the square footage here Four bedrooms, nine foot upper ceiling, ten foot main floor ceilings. How big is your house? We'd have to buy the report. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a look at the house, okay? So it's got hardwood floors, decent sized bedrooms, updated shower. This isn't this is not staged now. Okay, good. You can tell by looking at it, right. significant difference in how the house looks. Yeah. This is the yeah. So not a whole ton of pictures. However, the fit, the extra 10 feet, Ivan, automatically, even if the house is in the same square footage, it's a bigger lot than yours. So there's more value there, mm -hmm. right? Now it's not in bad shape. It's not as updated as you would have thought it would be. It's very much still builder basic. Um, however, you know, it is on a bigger lot. 
It does have the nine foot ceilings and the 10 foot ceilings. Um, everything seems to be updated. It has a sprinkler system, has an alarm system, has the finished basement, okay? So we are gonna assume that this is at the very least comparable if not superior to your property. Mm -hmm. I don't know your property, so it's hard for me to say where it, how they compare right now. Mm -hmm. But based, yeah, so you add it to, you're adding everything to the cart, okay? Everything that we think we can use. So I'm gonna say that this is superior, but without seeing your property, it's hard to tell. So when, this is why doing a CMA before you see the property can be challenging, because it's a lot harder to compare, okay? Um, however, based on the lot size alone, I would say it's a bit bigger, okay? Now this house, same lot, exact same lot size as you, same style as you, from what I remember, right? Mm -hmm. Your house mm -hmm. looks like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, finished, basement, separate entrance, 2,500 to 3,000 square feet, two-car garage, four driving spaces, four bedrooms, five bathrooms. It's literally like almost your house, right? Yeah. One of a kind, well, lovely and bright, detached, two-story, built by Rose and Haven, hardwood floor throughout, new hardwood on the second floor in 2007, new granite counters, tw or sorry, 2017, so it's been updated like recently in the last mm -hmm. year, okay? I'm gonna take a look. It's ornate. This is staged, no? It's cleaned and it's, I don't know if it's staged. That looks like it could be their furniture. But it's ornate and it's tidy and it's a bit, it's a good size. That's a proper master bedroom. Now, compared to your house, how, do you, how does it compare? Do these pictures look similar? Does your house kind of feel the same way? Uh, does he have a finished basement? Yeah, yeah, finished basement. Okay, so, so that's, that yeah, that's the finished basement. That's a wet bar over there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's carpet or concrete. It's either, it's concrete. It's concrete, yeah. But it is drywall. There is electrical. There is lights. There is a roof. It's still considered finished, right? So that's the finished basement. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, okay. that's not too big of a concern. Um, yeah. What we want to know is, you know your house, which is yeah. the subject property. Is this similar to your house? Uh, pretty much. Same condition in regard to um, the kitchen and the bathroom, like similar yeah, style? Yeah, I've also got granite. And okay. I've, I've got granite in the whole house, I think, no? Okay. Um, so very similar. Okay. Granite. Yeah. So very similar. Okay, so we're going to check this one off. That's a really good comparable. It just recently sold. Right, it's sold in actually sorry, sold the end of May and it sold for one point three one six. Okay, so that's a good comparable for us. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to the next house. Same thing, we're gonna go through it. Four bedrooms, forty nine by eighty foot lot, so similar again to us, a couple of feet different. Six washrooms. Is this eleven forty one? Yeah. Yeah, she'll come. Oh, she'll oh. come in? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can I, can I use your phone just to call her for a second? Yes. If you how long she'll be there. Sorry. Yeah, if you want, I'm gonna keep yeah. going because yeah, yeah, we're yeah. we're done at 12 either way. So, um, you're gonna look at your lot again, your dimensions, right? Um, we're gonna look at it has a finished basement with walkout. It's got the extra kitchen. It's got the two car garage, right? Um, so again, very similar, bright and spacious on a green belt area. But this one is also not backing onto a ravine, so we have that added value. Okay. Thanks, Two bedroom for potential income steps okay. to Young Street, Even lockbox for easy uh, showing. Minutes, okay? okay, so we're going to look at yeah. that one and we're going to say, yeah, that's a good one. It's pretty comparable. Okay. All right, so we're going to add that one to our list because it is, is compatible, right? yeah, okay. Now we're going to jump to the next one. This one sold for 1.442, so we're going to see a sign, and that was in um, July that it sold. So we're seeing a significant jump in price and we're going to kind of wonder, well, why is that? Yes. Bathurst and Gamble. So we're in a little bit of different location, and I'll show you in a minute what we do afterwards to narrow this down. But 44 by 93, very similar. Four bedrooms, five bathrooms, has a finished basement, has an extra kitchen. It's a 3,000 to 3,500 square feet, so it is yeah. bigger. Okay, It's actually over 3,400 square feet. Um, now, it's not backing under ravine, but it looks sounds like it has been fully updated. So, we're going to look says, at the pictures. When it says over 3,400, he's found in the basement? Room? Shouldn't be. But I can't promise that he's not. So, fully renovated, really modern, really updated, right? Yeah. Well, the bathroom's not, but most of it is. The floors are updated. There's a kitchen. This is the basement. 
Okay, nice modern finishes. So it is it is superior to you in the sense it's more updated yeah. and it's larger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to keep that because we still need the superior properties. Um, however, we're not going to be in that price range, right? Yeah. And then the next house, which is again larger, a smaller lot, 31 smaller. foot, but 161 yeah. deep. So it's almost W in depth, right? So wow. there's added value there. Mm -hmm. Four bedrooms, five bathrooms, finished basement, attached car garage. It's over 3,000 square feet as well. So again, you know, that added value that you don't have, right? Yeah. It's 3,200 square feet and they've done over 300,000 in upgrades, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you take a look at this one, it's going to be extremely, like, it's super updated. There's, this is far superior in the sense that there's been a lot of money put into this house. And this is staged. And this is more staged, yes. Yeah, like, so see when you see that, that's staging. Yeah. That's how you can tell the difference. Yeah. 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 Okay. Has an in-ground oh. pool. You don't have that professional landscaping. So this one, we're not even going to touch because it's just way better than us. Yeah. So we're not even going to add that to our list because there's no point, right? Yeah. So now we're done. We've gone through all of the listings. So we're going to click list again. So see right here? We're going to click on that. And we're going to go back to the full list. And what I'm going to do is basically select all of them except the last one because we didn't need that one. And I'm going to click map, okay? Oh, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and go, okay, we're located around here. So where, where's your house, Ivan, um, on this map? So we are backing onto this yes, kind of? Yes. So you're over here. So this guy, number four, who's way over here, is in a kind of a different pocket than us, right? So we may not want to use that one as a comparable, so I'm going to uncheck it, okay? Yeah, that's a shortcut. The rest of them I'm going to keep because they're pretty much in our same subdivision in the same boundaries. The number, what is it, three? Three also is out of it, right? Where's number three? three? This one? Yeah. Um, Where's, what, what's the place? Um, it's kind of still in your same pocket. Like you're up here, right? right, right. Yeah. yeah. So I think you're looking at the. I'm looking at this whole Jefferson area. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if I take three out, then do I have to take out 11? And do I have to take yeah, out 12? Yeah, yeah. Our hill list goes by. Yeah. The three is way out. It's just right here, though. Oh, okay. So what what makes you say that? So you're here, yeah. and it's here. Okay. So it's so just it's south. It's fun. not it's not really it's that the same far. Box you're bringing. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. You took that out already. Yeah, I took that out. I, so I unchecked it, okay? It's still going to be in our in our cart. Um, so I want to remove it. So I'm going to click remove. See here? Do you guys see what I did there? Uh-huh. I'm going to... I just took out the one that we unchecked ah, because okay, it's, okay. Not, so you, it's not a comparable. It, so it. you just click on the card beside it again, and you click remove instead of add if you uh, want to take yeah, it out, yeah, okay? Yeah, so I'm just going to remove it from the cart, all yeah, right? yeah. Now that's all done, so I'm going to go back to my list. I'm going to narrow my list. This is what I have left, okay? Pretty good, 11 comparables. We can give a good range with that many comparables. I have a good idea what the home is worth. There's some good comparables in there to tell us where we fall. The, uh, the availables aren't comparable in the sense that we're not using them to price it. We're just using them to show you what's going on in the neighborhood, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, all the time. Which yeah. So what you can do if you're looking for statistics, see this little calculator looking yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. When you have them all selected, if you click on that, it'll give you your averages. Average days on market, average washrooms, average taxes, average percentage of price difference, average list price, average sold price. It'll give you all of that. So if you want to click preview of kind of what the stats are, you can click on that. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's also nice, too, when you're when yeah, you can take a look at that. Yeah, it's a good little tool to, to use. Now, the next step, we have all our comparables. We've added them all to the cart. We have our range. We kind of know where what's superior, what's inferior. We're going to click, see this CMA button over here? You're going to click on that, okay? Makes sense. Is your daughter here, by the way? Yeah, she's there. Oh, okay. So the rest of, the rest of this we did um, the other day, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna. What we're gonna do is you're gonna create a new CMA, okay? And I'm gonna put in the address nine Barn Swallow, okay? It's a residential freehold, and I'm gonna hit continue. That's gonna now it's gonna create a CMA mm -hmm. kit for me. I'm gonna fill this out. So I'm gonna do Ivan, Delima, um, 
I'm just doing this for fun. I can put in your address, which is, oh, this is your email. Um, it doesn't matter. Anyway, you could fill out this out. So nine barn swallow court, right? Mm -hmm. And then the person is on the on the deed, then you'll put the spouse's name as well. Right? Exactly. Yeah. If so, if they're on title, you put the spouse's name as well. Okay. okay. They're a seller. If you want, you can put in all this information. We don't really need to. Subject property. There is no subject property for this. If there was, I could click on this. And it would ask me to put in the MLS. So remember, I'd already found it. Right. I could put it in here, and then it would show up in my CMA. But I don't have one, so it's not showing up, right? Here's all my information. This is not longer. This is. So make sure your information is up to date. Okay. Phone number's right. Office number's right. I don't have a second salesperson. This is what the cover page is going to look like. Prepared for Ivan. Here's the information. Here's my name. Here's my brokerage information, okay? Cover letter, it's pre-written. Don't worry about it. Done for you. Just leave it as is, okay? Here's the part that gets from the comparable listings. You could search the listings in here and do it that way. So do what we just did, but already in the CMA. You can add by the MLS number or you can add from listing cart. So this is why we saved it all to so listing cart. I'm going to click add from listing cart. I'm going to hit barn swallow. I'm going to hit add to CMA. Now all my comparables are in here. Okay. So I've done that step already. Next thing I'm going to do is this is going to be the comparables if I want to make any adjustments. So remember that graph I showed you where if it has one garage and there's two on your comparable, you can adjust here to make the properties match and it'll show you the price differential, right? So if your property has something this one doesn't, you add it. If your property doesn't have something this does, you subtract it, okay? You can do that here for all of the listings. Marketing, you can add your marketing plan here, okay? I like this. I can go add activity, okay? I'm going to add in open houses, okay? I'm going to add in, Ivan, we did this the other day with yeah. your thing. I'm going to add in um, flyer neighborhoods, right? And you can create, if you have like your whole, you know, 13 point or 14 point or 20 point marketing plan, put it in here. Mm -hmm. And that way when you're talking to them, you can also say, here's what it's worth and here's what I'm going to do to help get it sold, right? Yeah. Now, oh, I don't need that. All right. I'm going to leave that like that. Attachments. If I have any additional attachments, I wanted to upload permits, surveys, anything in regarding to the property, Geo Warehouse, Geo Warehouse, whatever, you can upload all that here and make it part of the kit. Okay, we're not going to do that right now because we don't need to. Here's what we're including side by side comparison, title page, cover letter, table of contents. We're creating them in the available sold and leased categories. So you're going to see both comparable summary, roadmap, market statistics, days on market, and your marketing plan. And okay? Oh, you can keep them if you want. So then you can't add it. Well, Gary, yeah. yeah, Gary was, yeah. Gary <laughs> okay, because he probably adds other stuff. Yeah. If you upload the stuff in before you print it, they'll have the page number on them, right? So if you upload, because you have your Geo Warehouse saved and you have your MPAC saved, yeah. if you want to attach that, you just upload it into this, and mm -hmm. then it, you can keep the page numbers. If yeah. you don't, if you're going to add other stuff to go with it, then yeah, take the page numbers out, okay? Uh -huh. And then we're going to hit save, okay? So we're done. Our CMA is pretty much done. Here's the only thing you're going to need to do. Um, now I'm going to go back to my CMA. Actually, I'm going to, I can download it. Okay. So I'm going to save and download. I want the entire CMA because I can save it now again as a PDF into my computer, into my folder for this property. Mm -hmm. So everything's in the same place. Everything's organized. You can get your hands on it really easy. You're not printing a bunch of stuff. It's just all accessible, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to open my CMA and you're going to see what it looks like. Okay, here's my CMA. If I had a subject property and there was a picture, the picture could show up on the front if I wanted it to. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, my picture could be here if I wanted it to. Here's your cover letter. Here's your table of contents. Here's your side-by-side -side comparison. This is one of the really cool things about this CMA is the way they do this. So when you're sitting down with your client and you're going through each side-by-side -side comparison of all the properties, you can see how they compare it. When you have a subject property, it's the first one. So these will all compare to your subject property. Now across the top here, it's going to tell you on the market, on the market, on the market, on the market, recently sold, um, sold, 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 right? 
So what you can do is go through each listing and explain to them how it falls into the range of their home, where your home fits. What I always do is I create what we call um, a frame where I say, okay, these are the properties that we would consider inferior to your home. And here's why they're either smaller or they're not backing on the ravine or they're in really bad condition. And then I would say, this is the best of the inferior properties, right? So say house number three is the best of the inferiors. And I'm going to say, yeah. what this is telling us is that we know that your home is worth more than this number because this inferior property sold for this and it's the best one. So that's giving us a bottom range of your value. Worst case scenario, this is what you're gonna get for your house. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna go to the superior properties and I'm gonna say, these are the best properties. They're, they're superior to yours in the sense that they're bigger, they're more updated, they're in a better location, whatever the reasoning may be. And then I'm gonna say, this is the worst of the superior properties, which means that we know on your best day, you're not going to get more than this for this home yeah. because people can get something better for that money. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So what I've done is remove the over expectation yeah. that their house is worth more than, than it actually is. And what I'm left with is a range yeah. between the inferior and the superior and our house falls somewhere in that range. So now let's take a look at the ones that are comparable to you. There's three. Now this one is almost identical to you in condition, in size, in location, and it backs out of the ravine. Mm -hmm. So this is our best comparable. This is the one that I'm going to say we're closest to. Now, that one sold a month ago for one point, whatever it was. <clears throat> so what we can kind of gather from that is you're roughly worth about the same as that house because we know the market hasn't really gone up in the past month, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, Ivan, you would end up basically, I have to look at them again, but the, you would end up in the range of, I believe, the, where is it? Hang on, let me actually look at the listings. It was, it wasn't any of these ones. It was this guy. This guy here was your best comparable. Same size, exact same lot, same condition, same number of bedrooms, and they sold for 1.316. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is that your superiors are above the 1.35 range, right? So mm -hmm. this Tower Hill guy was bigger than you, but he's on Tower Hill, which is a busier road, but also way more updated, sold for 1.395, right? Mm -hmm. 1.396. We know we're not worth that, but we do know that you're worth more than the 1.188 sale mm -hmm. or the 1.295 sale, which tells us your home is worth somewhere between 1.3 and 1.35 right now. Mm -hmm. Now, you compare extremely well to this home, this particular home that sold for 1.316, which would indicate to me that your home is probably about 1.316, maybe 1.320, depending on how your house shows. Yeah. But you can expect that you're going to get within 10,000 of that on either side, depending on the condition of your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. That's it. That's the CMA. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Nailed it. So based on that, you also have all the stats here if you want to do a breakdown with them. What I recommend doing is printing this out, obviously, before you go and going through with a highlighter and marking up the important stuff that you want to make sure you emphasize so you don't forget to talk about it. And I always actually print the full listings and bring them with me as well. Okay, and that way I can show them. Here's all the details. I go and I highlight and mark it up. Here's the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, everything, and the photos if you want, just to show them, hey, look, this is all the work I did. And then this is just kind of the little report that puts it all together, right? So you would bring all of that with you, plus your geo warehouse, plus your MPAC. That's how you do the CMA. Mm -hmm. uh, Janet, are you able to send me the CMA? Sure, I can send it to you. Yeah. Um, let me save it. Like, I hate to you guys. No, it's okay. It's so we're actually so we're actually so done. Um, I tried. Yeah. I am. It just, it just need that person to show you. I, I can't have a hard time reading that computer. I can't yeah. see it. But when you get it, it takes practice. For those yeah, of you that... I have a long day today, and I hate missing my donut thing. It's okay. Donut. You'll just have to make it up tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I did attempt something today. I tried oh. to record that. Um, I have a program on my computer that allows it will record the screen and my voice. Oh. So what I'm hoping is that I just created the video on how to do a CMA. And if I did, I'm going to upload it 
into our Facebook group and into our Gmail thing so that you guys can have access to it. So say you're doing your own CMA, you can follow along in the video. Okay. So fingers crossed that that... Mm -hmm.